Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 22 of my design patterns video tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about the chain of responsibility design pattern. So what exactly is the chain of responsibility design pattern? Well, this pattern has a group of objects that are expected to, between them, be able to solve a problem. And if the first object can't solve it, it just simply passes the data to the next object in the chain. In the example in this presentation, I'm going to create four objects that can either add, subtract, multiply, or divide two numbers that are sent. What you're simply going to do here, or the client's going to do, is send two numbers in a command and allow these four objects to decide which can handle the requested calculation. So let's look at a UML diagram to sort this out. Basically, we have our client, just like always, and then, of course, we're going to have a chain interface, and this is referred to as the handler, and inside of it, we're going to have set next chain, which is going to be passed a chain object. Now, what set next chain is going to do is it is going to be passed a reference to the next object to call in the chain if it is needed. Then, calculate, which is going to be implemented by both add numbers and subtract numbers multiply numbers and divide numbers which you're going to see here in a minute what calculate is going to do is either make the calculation or call the calculate method on the next object set by this guy right here set next chain see so if it can't make the calculation like add numbers down here can't make the calculation it is going to say okay what is the next object in the chain which is going to be subtract numbers and it's going to say okay let's call calculate on subtract numbers based off of the fact that subtract numbers object is going to be stored by set next chain if that didn't make any sense don't worry about it we're going to get into the code and go through this step by step Okay, so here I am over in Eclipse, and we're going to start writing some code. The first thing we're going to do is create our interface called chain.java. So let's just go in here. This is very simple. Don't worry about it. And it's an interface, and I'm going to call it chain. And it doesn't have to be called chain. I just thought it made sense that way. And then here we're going to define the next object to receive the data if this object is unable to process it. So we're going to go public void set next chain, and it's going to be passed an object that implements the chain interface and we're just going to call it next chain because that seems to make sense and then we're also going to force it to make a calculation of some sort and it's going to be passed a object called numbers and here I'm just going to call it request and that's it you're done there is the chain interface so now let's jump over into numbers.java and see exactly what's being passed to it so we're just going to go public class numbers and then we're going to store private int number one private int number two private string calculation wanted and this is going to ultimately decide on which one of these calculate methods is going to be called in which object that implements the chain interface and then numbers is going to be passed new number one new number two as well as a string calc wanted and then it's just going to simply take all these guys number one number two and calculation wanted and store those inside of here real simple I'll save that and then if we want to be able to get access to these numbers public int get number one and it's just going to return number one of course and then this guy's going to return number two and then this is going to be a string calc wanted and then here we're going to return calculation wanted file save it ready to go so now we're going to do add numbers and you're going to get to see how this is all put together so this is going to be real simple. We're just going to go public class add numbers implements chain. And then each one of these is going to store the next object in the chain that can perform these calculations. And here in this constructor, we're going to define that next object that's going to receive this data if this object is unable to use it. Let's just go up to add numbers, add on implemented methods, save ourselves some time. And then here we're just going to go next chain. Or in this situation, we'll go this next chain is equal to next chain that works and then down here in the calculations section everything's going to be based off of a string so we're going to get request get calc wanted and we're going to ask it if add is the name for that string and if it is just go request get number one plus plus 
number two, and this is just going to show them on the screen, plus equal sign, and then we can just take this and add these two numbers together. So that's a quick and dirty way to get that information. And that's just going to shoot it on the screen. Uh, this is going to be capitalized, of course. There we are. Else, if they did not send a string add, like you see right here, well, real simple, we're just going to say, well, I'm not going to worry about it. Let's let the next object in the chain calculate it or figure it out. And we're just going to pass them that number object called request. File save. And you're going to see the only thing that's really going to change is let's go into subtract numbers right here. And you can see everything is exactly the same, just like before. The only difference is here we're going to check to see if sub was passed along. And here we're going to subtract from it. And then you're also going to see the same thing is going to be true for malt numbers. There you can see malt is being passed over and here we're doing a multiplication instead of subtractions or additions. And then I'm going to go into divide numbers.java and actually do this all from the beginning except I'm just going to copy this because not much is going to change either even though this is a completely different one. Divide numbers all the same. The only thing is we're going to type in here div and here we're going to put in a division sign and here we're going to put in a division sign. So that's going to handle those divisions. And then down here else what we can do is print out a command. I mean this is just the basics of how this works. You can use this for numerous different things. It's basically just how to pass the buck to other objects is the whole entire idea of using this pattern, which is very, very useful. So there we are, we can print out an error message if none of those other things work. All right, so there we are, we're done. Let's jump in here and test this guy. So let's go test calc chain. And this is gonna be public, and all the code is available underneath the video. If you wanna really learn this stuff, go get it. It's heavily commented to help you understand what's going on here. And there we are, args. And then what we're gonna do is create our chain object. So calc one is gonna equal to new add numbers. This is really where all the magic happens. And then we need to do this for all of our potential calculation objects. Calc 2, Calc 3, and Calc 4. And then this is going to be subtract, malt, and divide. So there we are. We have all those set up inside of here. And then next I'm going to tell each object where to forward the data if it can't process the request. So we're going to go chain, Calc 1, set, next, chain, which is in every single one of these objects that implement the chain interface like that. And then we're going to do that for three of these guys. So the second one and the third one. And then this is just going to be three and this is going to be four. And that's just going to pass everything to the right place. And then we're just going to define the data in the number objects and send it to the first object in the chain. So we just go numbers request is equal to new numbers and let's say we want to pass it a four a two and add file save and then we're just going to go chain calc one which is the beginning of our chain to find that and pass request which is the numbers object to it and let it do its job that's it execute see what happens and there you can see four plus two is equal to six and just as easily let's go multiply didn't really have to change anything execute it again four times two is equal to eight and what happens if we would do something like type in pow, I'll save, execute, and there you go. You get a little bit of an error message. Only works for add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So there it is. There's the chain of responsibility design pattern. Whole bunch of things you can play with inside of there. Leave any questions, comments, or requests below. Otherwise, till next time.